see and we'll invite the kids to come up and sing. Amen. Uh, all right. As I kind of kick off today, uh, come approaching Christmas, I, I kind of want to ask you guys, like, what, what is your idea, what comes to mind when you think of, like, the ideal, perfect Christmas? Like, if you're going to have just, just that Christmas season that's just really going to get you in the spirit, in the mood, I, I, I kind of wonder what you expect to happen, what you have to have happen if you're going to have the perfect Christmas. Christmas. So what comes to mind? I, I want you to raise a show of hands. Do you have matching PJs you will be wearing on Christmas morning? No shame. Raise your hands. Do you have matching PJs? Come on. I know there's more matching PJs out there. Okay. Who's had matching PJs in the past? Maybe. maybe. All right. Is, is there, is there a, a movie, a Christmas movie you have to watch in Christmas? If you don't watch whatever movie, said movie, if, if the Grinch, the, the Christmas story, whatever it is, Elf, it's not Christmas unless you watch the movie. Who, who, who needs to watch a movie? It's, you, you've got to see a movie for it to be Christmas and get you in the spirit. 
Uh, you got, who wants like that ambiance, like the fireplace burning, you know? You gotta make cookies, who has to make, yeah, yeah, gotta have Christmas cookies. You gotta have all these things. Who wants snow on the ground? Like it's, it's just not, it's not just gonna quite feel like Christmas without snow on the ground, uh, you know? Like don't, don't you just, no, that's not universal. That's not universal apparently. Uh, who needs to, you know, you need to make sure you have the same meal, you eat the same thing at the same time, at the same house, and, and if, that, if that, you know, if somebody moves out of that house, we've got we to gotta buy it back because we've got to have Christmas, you know what I mean? We've got to have Christmas in the same place. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe your idea, if you want a good ideal Christmas, is you just want everybody to get along, you know? It's like, it's like I don't want anybody in a bad mood. I, I just want everybody, like, that's the Christmas miracle, right? If everybody gets along, everybody's in a good mood. Nobody's throwing a fit, not even your spouse. And everybody's just happy to be there, and, and the people you don't normally get along with, let's just pretend for a day, right? It's just, it, that's, that's my, you know, that's my ideal Christmas. Uh, maybe some of you guys, you want to get that, that perfect, like, Christmas picture, you know, by the tree, and then if you do have your matching jammies, it's all getting our, we got to have that perfect picture, and that will make our ideal Christmas. You know, and you see them, and you got, we'll be able to use that next year for our Christmas card next year. Uh, don't you just hate those people? It's like Thanksgiving and they send you their postcard already and it's like, you know, I just barely, I barely survived Thanksgiving. Now you're throwing this in my face that you have everything put together and your family looks so perfect and, and it, it, it doesn't that kind of like, at least for me, it's like, man, I'm not that organized. I'm not that put together. My life isn't that perfect. Uh, my perfect ideal Christmas doesn't typically seem to, to happen. And, and uh, I, I think of like the idea of getting that like perfect picture. I'm not sure how long ago it was, maybe a few years ago. I don't even remember specifically what it was for. If it was for my mom's birthday or for her Anna, or no, birthday or something. And we were getting family pictures of, of all the little kids uh, for, for my mom. For I, I don't remember what it was for. Do you remember what it was for? Was that a Christmas gift? It was for Christmas. Uh, so it was in the fall. Uh, it was in the fall. There's beautiful foil, foliage and everything and a nice, nice setting. And we get all these little kids, you know, they get them all lined up and and, uh, the, you know, there's a photographer and then the kids and then behind the photographer is my sisters and my wife just going like, you know, doing like <laughs> yelling and shouting and, and they're just yelling. They're sh- it's a good thing it's not a video, you know, and they're just shouting at the kids yelling and, and so I'm standing off to the side and just taking it all in. I was like, you know, they're trying to create this perfect thing with these kids and, you know, they're wandering and drifting and then behind it is just like chaos behind the, behind the camera. So I did what any uh, good brother would do and husband, I, I took a video of it. <laughs> And just took in all, all of the, the goofiness. And, uh, and then uh, I had, it was a Snapchat, you know, so I shared it with everybody, um, including my mom. So I spoiled, spoiled the Christmas gift because I sent the video to my mom. Uh, really, really blew it. You know, I thought I was being funny, and then I was not anybody's favorite that day. Uh, but, you know, we're here to, to celebrate uh, Christmas. And I just kind of want I wonder today if, if you have that, that, that image in your mind, you just want that ideal, perfect Christmas. Uh, and sometimes we put up a, fa- a facade, you know, we do all these traditions and things over and over, but kind of behind the camera lens, deep, a little bit deeper inside, it's just something is just wrong. You know, no matter how perfectly you try to craft and create, it's like there's still something just unsettling, uh, maybe, maybe depressing. Maybe anxiety stores up because you're so, under so much pressure to, to put on the perfect Christmas. Maybe you, you need to get that perfect Christmas gift and you're worried whether your, your, your kids or your spouse or whomever is going to enjoy that gift. You, you feel just so much mounting pressure to have the perfect ideal Christmas. And we are here to celebrate the original Christmas. And I, I love in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, where, where Paul says, The time had fully come. The time had fully come. It was the perfect setting the perfect time for Christmas, for our Savior to be born. Oh, it was God, perfect in God's timing for his son to be born of a woman. And you can look at all different aspects. And we're going to read some of the, some of the classic uh, Christmas scriptures today. And I'm going to start out, if you do have a Bible with you, in Luke chapter 2. And, and let's take a look at what Mary experienced. Luke chapter 2, we'll just read verse 26 through 38. Uh, as Mary had the visit from Gabriel. It says, In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. 
The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Mary reacted like how everybody acts and reacts when they see an angel, uh, terrified, greatly troubled. This is a very unsettling experience, just inspiring, terrifying experience. So uh, I, I never tell my wife that she looks like an angel because I'm never terrified of her appearance, okay? So, so don't, don't miss, I'm just, word of advice there, fellas. Uh, don't, you're, not, you're not terrified by her. Don't call her your angel. Um, so anyways, she was greatly troubled, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. The first thing I kind of want you to understand today is that sometimes we, we want to create Mary into this deity, but really she's just this simple teenage girl, uh, everyday, ordinary, young girl, and just something extraordinary is about to happen to her life. And, and it, the first kind of idea and concept I want you to understand today is that, is that God has the ability to invade the seemingly mundane with heavenly purpose. God has the ability to, to invade the seemingly mundane portions of your life and fill it and instill it and inspire it with heavenly purpose. There's no throwaway events. There, there's, there's no wasted days. There's no regular, ordinary people. Nobody is insignificant. And, and you know, don't we have so much of that thought process that, well, that was a waste of time. You know, I, oh my gosh, where did that time go? I, I want you to know, I don't care what job you do. I don't care how boring you think your job or insignificant your job is. I don't care if you go to school every day and you think school's boring and getting repetitious. God has the, the ability to instill and impact everyday ordinary things with amazing, awe-inspiring, heavenly purpose. Mary was a teenager just minding her own business, planning to marry the guy she loved. I mean, you think of the shepherds out in the fields. They were just trying to keep warm, watching the sheep. They're the lowest of the low job, the most insignificant job in the world. And God showed up. And there was heavenly purpose. There's nothing on earth, nothing in your life that God can't invade with heavenly purpose. Let's look at Joseph's now perspective in Matthew chapter 1. We got Mary's side of things. Let's get Joseph's side of things. Matthew chapter 1, we'll read 18 through 26. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. I love how it says Joseph had in mind. 
You know, Joseph, Joseph kind of logically processed this thing. I, Joseph had in mind, this is a logical idea, it was the polite and respectful thing to do. Uh, this, is, this, is what, this is what he logically come, came up with in his head. Is that, you know, he wasn't going to blast Mary out publicly on Facebook. You know, he's just going to show what, you know, she cheated on me and I'm leaving her and this is it. And I'm, no, we're going to do it quietly. Okay, we're, we're going to do it nice and quietly. And, and this is the respectful thing to do, Joseph thought in his mind. Uh, it actually says he, he considered what he was going to do. He considered the options. It almost doesn't infuse enough of the emotion that was going on in there in the Greek, in the original text. It really is talking about it, he, was, he was fuming over it. He wasn't just considering over what's... He was fuming over this. Don't you ever do that? When, when, you, when you come to, to a decision or, or a problem in your life, it's like you, you stir, you consider, you, you, you fume over these things. And then, you know what? We do a lot of pondering. Hopefully we're, we aren't reactionary. You know, we think logically. We make a, we make a sound decision. And, and then we make up our mind. And that's kind of what Joseph did. You know, he kind of let that anger pass and, and did, the, did the righteous, did the, the just, the gentle thing. He thought it over. He considered the options and this was his decision. And then God showed up. Then God showed up. I want to tell you, I think we do this a lot, but we don't react the same as the way as Joseph does here. We don't go along with it. I think a lot of times we dig our heels in and we make up our mind we come to a logical conclusion, and that's what I'm deciding I'm going to do from now on. But a lot of times in our life, God is something else for you than what you have in mind for yourself. Uh, I can tell you, if, if you've kind of followed my testimony or my story and, and, and how I've shared, like Karina has had a huge impact on my faith life. And, and getting me back into church and, and, and pointing me back to Jesus and, and, and really just massive role in my faith life. And I, I've always kind of wondered, like, what role do I play for her? You know, like she, she did all this for me. What, what benefit do I provide to this relationship, spiritually speaking? And uh, yeah, I think I really am. Uh, I'm just like the wild card. You know what I mean? Like, like she gets something in her mind, and, and she's very uh, strong-willed. And then I think God just kind of threw me in there to be like, woo! We're doing something else. <laughs> I think logically speaking, I came to a conclusion in my mind for my life. You kind of, you kind of want, to, you want, want to pave out and, and, and picture how your life is going to go. Logically speaking, I'm going to get a normal job. I'm going to marry a normal wife. And we're going to have normal kids. And, and we're just going to live this perfectly normal, mundane life. And God says something different. God had something different in mind. And I would love to tell you I just went with the flow, right? But, oh, I pushed back. God has something greater for you in mind for your life than what you've planned out. God has bigger plans than you could ever dream. But you've got to follow him. You've got to follow what he calls you to do. You've got to listen to him. You've got to hear him. You've got to watch. You've got to have open eyes and open hearts to receive his word and his, his purpose and his will for your life. So we got Mary, we got, we got Joseph, and we, and we know how the story goes. They travel for a census uh, to Bethlehem while she's pregnant, and it was a difficult journey, and then they had no room, and they go to a manger, and it's just this, this kind of chaotic scenario, isn't it? And it's far from ideal in our, in our human minds. Uh, it certainly wasn't sanitary, uh, it was not a sterile environment. Uh, but our Savior was born. Our Savior was born in the humblest of circumstances. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus among us. But not, he was not sus. If that's for the kids. You old people won't get that. There's a video game called Among Us. And there's like one traitor in the midst and this, they call him, so you know, you're sus, you're, sus, you're suspicious, is kind of, okay. <laughs> way, way over, there's, there's like, type, do you, Titus, do you get that? You guys are too old. But what we forget, what we forget is that, is that Jesus came to save us, to be perfect, to die on a cross for our sin. Because we can't be perfect. We can't. We mess up. 
We say things we regret. I say things I regret all the time. We do things that we are flat out ashamed of. Uh, if, we, if we spoke them out loud, we would just be full of guilt and shame. And as hard as we try, we are never perfect. We are, we are never good enough. We can't even put on a perfect Christmas. Right? Kids act out, throw a fit. Spouse is in a mood, puts you in a mood. And then you just feed off each other and it just escalates. You know, Uncle Jim, he's, he's just sharing his political views again and it's just getting tense. <laughs> we are far from perfect. And our reality is, is, is that our lack of perfection, uh, our sin in our life, there's consequences to that. As a result of our sin leads to separation from God. And not only separation from God, but actually leads to our physical death. Because of sin, we, have a, we experience a physical death. Spiritually speaking, we never die. Spiritually speaking, we, we will live forever. One way or another, one place or another, you will never cease to exist. You consciously will always exist. Your destination is up for grabs, but you are an et eternal being. And the temptation for Christmas is for it to be perfectly crafted into this perfect holiday for you and your, and your family. I feel like that's a great pull and temptation for us around this time of year. The pressure to be perfect. The pressure to have the perfect picture to post on social media to show everybody how awesome you are doing. The, the, the pressure to, to try to get people to, to feed your ego, right? And get likes and, and, and... We miss the significance of Christmas and, and trying to create this, this, this perfect holiday. Jesus came because we aren't perfect. Because we can't be perfect. Because as hard as you try, we are never perfect. Behind the appearance of perfect is chaos, anxiety, depression. All of that facade we put up of perfect, it's never real. It always leaves us feeling empty. It always feels us leaving unsatisfied. When the gift doesn't land, when the toddler messes with the Christmas tree, when the family isn't getting along, and when your spouse is angry at you, it's not very Christmas, is it? It doesn't really put you in the Christmas spirit, not really feeling it. Or maybe grief sneaked its way into your Christmas. It's funny how that works, isn't it? In this season, we try to craft this perfect environment, but because of a loss of a loved one, it is simply impossible. Christmas can't be perfect because they're not going to be here. We crave for perfect. But the thing you need to know about the birth of Jesus, it was always about death. As soon as Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb, the clock was ticking towards the cross. We, we celebrate Jesus' birth because it was always going to lead to our greatest enemy here on earth, which is sin and death. It bothered Jesus how much of a grip death had on us as people. It bothered Jesus seeing people grieving for the loss of their loved one. The Bible says Jesus wept in frustration over the captivity that death had on his people. But the good news, the reason we celebrate Christmas, the reason we can celebrate, even though we lose loved ones that aren't here anymore, even though the tree doesn't look perfect, even though the matching jammies didn't come in from Amazon on time. And 
the reason we can still celebrate is because Jesus conquered death. You know, we, we, we clap a lot of things for a lot of things in society. You know, we, we clap like when our sports team, we're watching like our football team on the TV that can't even hear us, we'll clap and shout. You know, I'm really, it's really awkward. when I hate going to movie theaters when people clap for the movie. Like, this is fake, guys. You ever have that experience? We clap for the most ridiculous things in this world. Can you clap because Jesus conquered death? Huh. Can we decide to be that church? Like, man, sleeping. I know it's late, but man. Jesus died, but he did not remain dead. Jesus is alive. I love in Romans chapter 8, verse 10 through 11, how Paul spells it out for us. He said, but if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, Translation, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, receive Him in your heart. Put all of your faith and trust and hope in Him. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you, give to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. When you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, you get to live too. Because Jesus conquered the grave, because Jesus conquered death, we can conquer death as well. That's why we celebrate. We, we don't celebrate this perfectionist mentality we don't celebrate the things of this world. We celebrate the fact that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son. And the thing is that what John is telling us there in John 3.16, and he's talking to Nicodemus, and how, how, do, how do I live? How, how do I live? How do I eternally live? How am I raised? How can I conquer death? The answer is to be born again. You've got to be born again. How do you be born again? Receive Jesus. It's that simple. There is nothing you can do apart from that. There is no amount of works. There is no amount of putting up a facade of perfection. There is no amount of good deeds. There is no amount of anything that you can do outside of receiving the greatest gift this ever world has ever seen. That's it. That's it. But the thing about a gift is you have to receive it. If I throw a gift under your tree, you've got to open it up. Otherwise, it's going to sit there and it's not going to do anything. There is this free gift of grace, but you have some part and role to play. You've got to receive it. And the amazing, incredible thing is, is once you receive this, once you receive this gift, this is where God just has something extraordinary planned for your life. If you will listen to him and follow him. If you would see that throughout the Bible, not just with Mary, not just with the Joseph, the entire Bible, it's full of just these ordinary, regular people experiencing the extraordinary plan and purpose through God's will. And, and he wants you to take part. He has a role for you to play. He wants you to share. He wants you to evangelize. He wants you to point others to Jesus. I, it's going to be amazing. I think an incredible experience in heaven, number one, you're going to be in the presence of God. That's, that's just the bigger, woo, crazy. But I think it will be amazing just to be, just to be gathered and, and celebrating and, and eating. And, 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 and there's eating in heaven, so I'm excited for that. It's a big, big part of my life. I don't want it to be in my... You know how awesome that will be one day for someone to come up to you and say, like, you, I'm here because you played a massive role in my life. If it weren't for something you said, if it weren't for something you prayed, that if it weren't for something that you, you showed love... I, you had this huge role that, wouldn't that be the bee's knees? Wouldn't that be amazing?
Don't just consider all of your options. Don't just ponder over what you logically think is best for your life. Don't just decide for yourself the plan and purpose for your life. Allow God to speak into your life. Have the open heart to receive Him and speak into your life. And watch the extraordinary, amazing, heavenly purpose things that He does through you. Yeah, you, just you ordinary, everyday person working a boring job. You think you're living a boring life. He has something so much more spectacular in store for you. God loves you. Despite our imperfection, despite our worst moments we ever, ever committed, God loves you still. You are never out of reach of His grace. So you can join Him. Have life everlasting in heaven. He who lived among us came to die so you could live in His presence forever. Death loses its sting. Losing loved ones, not that bad. I'm more jealous. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll, we'll end with this. Verse 54. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, but the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. We'll sing our final couple songs.
so much, Father God. I thank you so much, Lord. God, I just thank you just that you've given us this time to come together and just praise your glorious name. Lord, I just pray as we just approach these next couple days, Lord, that we would have our, our just, just the wherewithal, just the understanding, Lord, that uh, we aren't perfect. God, that we never could be. God, that we could never be good enough, we could never be kind enough, that our deeds would never never overcome our ability to overcome our sin, Lord. We are, we are broken, we are lost without you. But God, I thank you so much that you brought light into our world. God, I pray if there's someone here today, God, that needs a little light in their life, God, that they would, they would look to the true light, God, the true light that you display, God, that they would come to a full understanding and knowledge that you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord, that they would accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, God, that they would no longer use their logical mind and things that they considered and pondered over, but God, they would, they would come to know you, because God, what you truly seek above all else is, is a relationship with us. God, you desire to know us in relationship. Lord, I pray that whoever needs to receive Jesus, God, that they would pray and accept Jesus into their heart. Lord, it is so amazing that your word says whoever would seek you, they will find you. God, you would never turn us away. You are always standing at the door waiting. Lord, I pray as a church, God, that you would shine your light through us. God, that when we receive Christ as Lord, that you would... You would just shine something far brighter than we could ever do on our own, Lord, and especially as we come together as a church, God, that it would shine even brighter. God, would you accomplish your will through our lives and through this church. God, I thank you. I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.